this is truly tragic, what's happening right now. Um, it, it was so preventable if we had just had the right plan. And now Joe Biden, and listen, I wish the guy no ill will, okay? You know, it, it, I, I knew he would be bad on the economy. I wasn't fond of his foreign policy, but nonetheless, I certainly didn't expect anything like this. I didn't expect that we would have dead American soldiers and threats of multiple terror attacks amid multiple terror attacks there in Afghanistan. I never expected anything like this, nor do I think many others did, which is why you are now seeing both sides of the aisle condemn the President of the United States for his very poor performance that is costing American lives in Afghanistan. Hello everyone, I am Trish Regan. Welcome to The Trish Regan Show. Just a reminder to make sure that you go to my website, trishintel.com and sign up for the Intel. Sign up for my newsletter so that we have a way to correspond directly with each other. All the news stories are there covering markets, economics, politics, and of course foreign policy right now because this really is a tragedy. They're talking about, at last count, 12 American military members that have died. Upwards of 60 Afghanis that have died that were desperately trying to get out of the country. And I think everybody is just sort of in a little bit of um, shock. There was the press conference yesterday afternoon where also the president, in, a, in an extraordinarily poor manner and showing such extraordinarily poor form, tried to blame these events on the past president. Yes, there was an exchange with Peter Ducey from Fox, actually, where Peter asked him the obvious question, which is, do you bear any responsibility for what has happened? To which the president then said, I do bear responsibility, but you'll recall there was a president before me that made a plan with the Taliban to get out on May 1st. So I, I, I'm sorry, excuse me. Apparently, you know, you, you pick and choose the plans that you adhere to. You didn't have to adhere to Trump's plan. For goodness sakes, you're president of the United States, Joe Biden, all right? You know, it, rise to the occasion. You got rid of the Keystone Pipeline. You got rid of the border wall. So... Couldn't you just say, you know what, I'm not going to go for this exit plan. It's not the right timing for me and for my generals and our military. I mean, you could have done that. You should have done that. You didn't do it. Because for some reason, this president had the agenda of wanting, wanting so badly to give a speech on the 20th anniversary of 9-11 and tell the whole world we were out. Look, nobody wants forever world wars. I get that. I get that. I don't either. But you know what? When you get out, you got to do so with some proper planning so that you're not leaving American soldiers there to die and the people that helped America for the last 20 years there to die. There still are reports of roughly 1,000 Americans that are stuck in Afghanistan and cannot get out. And this truly is unthinkable. There are those that are calling for impeachment. We've heard a chorus of people on the right calling for his impeachment. And I would say that that is an extraordinarily challenging situation, right? I, I realize that the left did that with Trump, uh, but I'm not saying two, two wrongs make a right here. I mean, look, I think if, if you can prove high crimes and misdemeanors, yes. But what is challenging is can you impeach for total incompetence, right? It, he's an incompetent president who is risking America and Americans' lives as a result. I have more to say on that, more to say on impeachment, more on why he needs to resign right now and do the honorable thing. But first, I want to tell you, you know, we look at what's happening today. We look at what's happening with massive mistakes from a foreign policy perspective. And you have to think about what that is going to mean for the future hegemony of the United States. And part of that hegemony is tied to the strength of the U.S. dollar, right? But the U.S. dollar is and will 
suffer thanks to all this inflation that we are seeing. And believe me, there's going to be more of it because we have a, a, a very poor president who is not thinking strategically about where we need to be as an economy and where we need to be as a foreign power. And these things are all interrelated. I mean, you've got the Federal Reserve, of course, meeting this weekend virtually. This is the Jackson Hole thing that they do every year, which now is going on round two of being virtual. And we have a Federal Reserve that seems very keen to print. We may get some indication that they're going to back away from things. They've already said that they're going to back away from the taper, just to, or they are going to taper, I should say, just a little bit, backing away from the $120 billion worth of bond purchases. purchases. But, but all in all, we are going to continue struggling with inflation. And in, in really, I think, significant ways that we have not seen in recent years. So I keep saying to people, you want to think through how you diversify in this environment, whether it's Swiss francs, whether it's real estate, or whether it's gold. I mean, gold is one of the most proven hedges for inflation over time and should be part of any well-diversified portfolio. So I encourage you to look at it. You know, I was telling someone the other day, I, I told them to buy gold like way back in 300 three hundred dollars an ounce and this is this is like decades ago but um I, i've certainly been right i mean i hate to be right on this but I, i'm going to continue being right because unfortunately inflation just is a reality so call when you look at this call my friends at legacy precious metals they've been doing this for 40 years they know how to help you figure all this out and navigate it and it's not easy i get it one eight six six five eight nine you see the number on the bottom of the screen if you're watching on video five eight nine zero five six zero so one eight six six 589-0560, LegacyPMInvestments.com. They have a free investing guide for you there. So go and check it out and do make sure that you look out for yourself and you look out for your family in light of everything that's happening. A reminder again, make sure you go to TrishIntel.com. Do download my podcast there. Subscribe to the podcast. Subscribe to the newsletter because we need to keep in touch right now for sure. You know, again, this is a real tragedy unfolding before our eyes in Afghanistan. And I suspect, given what our intelligence community has been hearing, it's not over. So there will be more lives lost. There will be likely more American soldiers lost. There will be more Afghanis lost. And you say to yourself, what the heck for? So again, he could go up and make a speech. And now he doesn't get to make the speech he wanted to make, so he turns around and blames it on Trump. I mean, that was pretty appalling. I'm sorry, we're, we're at a kind of war right now, with ISIS, by the way, all over again, because it's the ISIS branch, ISIS-K, that's over there doing this. The Taliban is who we are relying on for our security. Allegedly, per various reports, the Taliban was provided with a list of names of Americans that the U.S. wants to protect. I mean, I'd be pretty nervous if I was on that list and the Taliban had it in its hands, would you not? And how can you trust the Taliban when we've now just had multiple, multiple suicide bomber attacks? I, 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 I'm amazed at the stupidity. I mean, I just... He, he needs to do the honorable thing at this point. He needs to resign. Now, I realize, yes, there will be a chorus of people wanting to impeach him. And if you look at how politicized the environment was around Donald Trump, for goodness sakes, they're impeaching him over a, you know, a phone call with the, 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 the head of Ukraine at the time, the president of Ukraine. I mean, we're talking about American lives that have been lost now and um, significant danger to the world going forward because you know, and I explain this, I explained this earlier this week, the threat of new terror attacks with the Haqqani network there as part of the Taliban having a seat at the table. And now ISIS having a seat at the table as well. Now, don't kid yourself. I realize, I realize that the professionals are all saying, oh, don't worry, the Taliban is actually on our side because they're self-interested and they want us out of there and they know the way to get us out of there is to make sure that there are no problems. The Taliban, who allowed Al-Qaeda to coexist, effectively nurtured it there for years, and then we paid the price. So we're supposed to do this all over again with the Haqqani Network and ISIS and anybody who wants to go and do bad stuff and inflict pain on Americans gets a safe harbor 
in Afghanistan because Joe Biden decides we don't need to be there anymore? 2,500 troops. If you could have kept 2,500 troops there and then slowly, slowly gotten out in a way that was not this, wouldn't you have taken that option? I mean, this is, this is pretty... This is pretty awful. And um, for anyone who's out there, James Carville, I know, has been saying, oh, well, you know, this is just what happens. It was going to happen. You know what? It didn't need to happen like this. And I don't want to hear that. That is so disrespectful to the people that have now lost their lives. It didn't have to happen like this. And if we had some more strategic and less political people there in the White House, a little less concerned with speeches and more concerned with ground game, then we wouldn't be in this position today. So if he were an honorable man, yes, he would look at turning over the reins to his vice president. Of course, then we're, then we're stuck with her, all right? So, you know, pick your poison here because this is not a good outcome in any way. Then Kamala Harris is president. Kamala Harris, who just laughs every time she's presented with something serious, who chooses to go oddly to Vietnam, very interesting, comparison, right, given what we're seeing right now. Actually, I would argue this is, this is worse than Vietnam. This exit is far worse. It's, it's the worst we, we've seen in, in probably more than a decade, right, this many American soldiers killed. Um, certainly within the last two years, I don't think we've lost any American soldiers. It, it, is, it is unnecessary. It is horrific. And if nothing else, fire blinking, okay? Fire Fire, fire your Secretary of State. Change out your generals. Do whatever you have to do. But we can't allow this kind of incompetence to continue right now. It is too dangerous for America. It is too dangerous for the world. Please make sure you go to trishintel.com. Sign up for my newsletter. Make sure you are subscribed to this channel on Rumble or on YouTube. Make sure you give it a thumbs up or a rumble or a, a like on Facebook. And I will be back again with you here tomorrow. Hopefully, hopefully we have some better news because you know what? We're going to have to start to rethink everything right now. I'm telling you this. We as conservatives need to think strategically about what happens next because we're talking about many, many, many problems many national security problems, many terror threats that will arise out of one man's very poor, very, very dumbly thought out actions. And that's putting it nicely, okay? Thank you again for tuning in. I'm gonna see you right back here tomorrow. We have more to discuss.